Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Mantalk.ke. Thanks for coming back this week and the weeks before and the coming weeks with the new episodes. We are here in Keystone Park, Riverside Drive at Kofisi. Kofisi is our home. We shoot it here all the time. Mm -hmm. We're in the knowledge room where you can hold board boardroom meetings. There's also small offices outside if you have a company of 10, 15 or even smaller. Or if you're just an individual and you want a co-working space where you can network and have fantastic coffee. So there's many, many locations around Nairobi. We're on Riverside Drive. There's some in Karen, there's some in Westland. So the link is below if you need that kind of space for your work. Today is very, very exciting. It's going to be a very uh, extensive uh, interview. Oscar, do you want to do the honors? Um, as you can tell, I'm holding my phone on set. This there rarely is. ever happens. <laughs> um, same, 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 same. Uh, but this CV is long. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so on my right, I have Mr. Joel Stephen Rao. Um, surprise, it's not a sigh, yes, because it should be. Um, he's a CEO of Dentsu Digital Brands um, and a co-founder of Africa Creative Agency. For those who may not know about these two things, I am going to tell you right now. Um, Dentsu Digital Brands is the largest if not the largest digital agency in kenya right now um africa creative agency runs one of the largest creative businesses and contributes most in the creative economy throughout sub-saharan africa mm -hmm. um manages nasty sea saudi soul and some of the biggest international acts ever responsible for kevin hart's what now africa performance um also responsible for Soul Fest, which is one of the biggest, um, biggest, biggest, if not the biggest event we've had in Kenya so far, um, two years running. Um, it's a huge, huge honor to have you. I will continue because, cool. I, like I said, the CV is extensive. I'll go to the achievements. I've scrolled down. <laughs> um, let's begin. Uh, first of all, there are over 120 over the past five years. But as he says in his CV, he will just highlight a few. Um, top 25 men in digital. Mobile Marketing Association Smarties Gold Award in 2014, one-time Can Lion Award for Digital Craft, two-time Can Shortlist 2021, Dentsu Star of the Year 2022, African Picture Festival Digital Agency of the Year 2022, I mean. African Picture Festival Agency of the Year again. Boom. <laughs> One's not 2022, <laughs> a jury president of the Picture Festival Awards mm -hmm. in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, e four time, not once, not twice. <laughs> I mean, we are with the Michael Jordan of Digital Agency. Uh, um, four time e commerce agency of the year 2019 to 2021. Mm -hmm. um, I could keep going, guys. Um, it really is an honor to have you on our set today. Thank you so much for having me. Guys. And how are you feeling? How are you feeling today? Um, I'm feeling warm. Um, loving the energy. Um, I mean, it's been it's been a crazy time. Obviously, mm -hmm. getting to where we are right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm excited. I won't lie to you. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about the prospect of the future. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I cannot wait. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. cannot wait. Literally, I cannot <laughs> wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Those achievements are all to say, like getting you for this hour is it's not a, a small thing. So we really appreciate you making the time. Thank you. Thank um, you. Your very very big schedule. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm sure you might have seen the show online here and there, but uh, the essence of the show is talking about how men achieve things in life, how the two genders can coexist together and doing that through conversation. Mm. So whenever we have somebody with those kind of achievements like you, the kind of man you've been able to do in the corporate world, we want to dial it back to what your definition is of a man and what you, the most positive thing you think you give to the world as a man, because that will now inform your mindset to be able to achieve all of those things. Mm. So what's your best, the best thing about being a man as an individual in society today? Wow. Mm. I wish I prepared for that question. Yeah, you <laughs> wish you did. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we like it. Yeah. That's how we like it. Yeah. Oh, like it. Yeah. Welcome to Man Talk yeah. the King. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Uh, in all honesty, um, my definition of being a man is understanding your position in, in, in society as defined by the basic unit of society, which is family. Um, I've come from a family of four brothers. I'm a firstborn of four boys. Mm. I've been brought up knowing that, you know, as a man, there are certain responsibilities that you're supposed to take, non-negotiable. Mm. Um, but at the same time, I remember my mom telling me that in as much as you're taking your position as a man in society, you need to understand that there's a role that women will play in your life mm. and, 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 and that they will bring in value that you not necessarily see mm -hmm. you just actually experience it um and i saw this with my dad right. because 
we wouldn't have built our house mm. if it wasn't for my mom thinking the way she thought. Because my dad was focused so much on work and, mm. you know, she had to like, mm. you know, make that happen, mm. you know, form that and in, in bring it to existence in the way it did. So in my mind, as a man, it's taking the responsibilities that you have mm. yeah, and, 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 and owning that. Um, good and bad will come out of it and owning those two. Mm. But at the same time, um, understanding that there is the women mm. around us who actually support us and it's again, either going to be your mothers, your sisters, your wives, mm. um, your daughters, who are actually going to be able to bring that to life because it's wholesome in that way. 100%. Um, and 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 that's how I I view it. I, and I'm talking just from my own experience as a man. I'm giving my definition as a man from mm. from my own experience. Yeah. 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 Wow. I wonder Strong. if you prepared for that question with that response. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is how you know, guys, uh, that someone's been interviewing, doing media for a long time. Ah. This is how you know he he's, he just he just he just touches your heart and says, like, "I have four brothers. Uh, uh, you know, I, you know, my mom, my, my dad. <laughs> you know, like so, so wholesome. Well, what a whole, yeah, yeah, very wholesome that's answer." Um, second question um, around manhood is mm. what are some of the misconceptions you wish women knew um, about us as men um, and would you take that this opportunity to dispel some of those one of those at least mm. misconceptions um, because we, we we tend to get a bad rep um, a toxic masculinity um, being let's say over aggressive leaders yeah. um, but you as being a leader who's led teams with women in them ethically and honestly um how what are some of the misconceptions you think that women have about men um in the workplace in life and in society today okay so i believe that um the misconceptions that are first and foremost let me allow me to zoom out yeah from that question the misconceptions that have existed today are as a result of years and years of um, people driving certain agendas mm -hmm. against the boy child. Not necessarily against the boy child. Let me correct that. Driving an agenda for the girl child. Mm -hmm. And as a result of doing that, forgetting that there's a boy child. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, boys and men have always held a higher you know level in society mm -hmm. because there is a level of expectation because of the affirmations that they were given when they were younger mm -hmm. that the girl child never got like you know there, there are certain expectations that were that were laid to a to a boy when they were growing up like you know as a as a boy you know you need to take care of your sisters you need to take care of your mother you need mm. to take care of your family when you grow up and those responsibilities were always given um education was a big thing when you think about it historically even when you look at our our country the people who were first the first historical uh, records of people who were educated mm. were mostly the yeah. men yeah. and yeah. the women were sort of left mm. behind and as a result of that the shift deliberately needed to move towards the girl child mm. but what happened with that swing of the pendulum mm. was that over time the boy child mm. was left out mm. and so you are empowering a girl child and rightfully so mm. but on another spectrum you're forgetting that there is an element of emotional intelligence that needs to be developed within this boy. Mm -hmm. He needs to understand that his demonstration of power is not when he lift up, lifts up his hand and mm -hmm. tries to hit a woman, mm -hmm. but you know, power is actually demonstrated by showing that I can actually hit you, mm -hmm. but I'm going to restrain myself. And that mm -hmm. restraint is power in itself. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> excuse me. When I think about that, when I zoom out and I think about that, to hone in now into your question, I started seeing the aspect of certain expectations being laid upon men. You know, for example, a very simple thing in, in the relationships, you know, women would expect men to just know stuff as if, you know, we are gods and we are all knowing. But in reality, 
we are just like you mm-hmm. we need to understand things we need to be explained for things mm-hmm. you know um and i always tell them, i used to tell my um um my wife this when we were dating back in the day that i'm not god to know what you need mm-hmm. yeah just mm-hmm. Help me understand what you need. The same way yeah. I'll tell you what I need. Yeah, we did not attend Hogwarts. Exactly yeah. for women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a fantastic. So, 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 it's 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 that in that sense. And then the other aspect of it was just getting to see how, um, you know, as as men, we there's the certain things that uh, the certain expectations have been set around, you know being fi- financially responsible especially in a relationship setting whereby um you know you're expected to provide and rightfully so as a man you are meant to provide for a family and I'm a strong believer I'm a traditionalist in that sense mm. strong believer that you know as a man you are actually meant to provide for a family uh, but at the same time um as women that doesn't mean that you actually take on everything that a man provides mm and spend it for you and you keep yours i want to believe that there's a mutual indwelling in the way we are actually supposed to exist in that relationship between yeah. men and women yeah. and so yeah. they bring in their value and what people don't understand is that when the woman brings in their value financially yeah. there's an increment it's one plus one is not two yeah. one plus one is seven Mm. and people don't realize that and for the for the most successful people in life in society today when you look at the women behind them and what they've been able to do mm. it's exactly that it's women have this ability to they have a th- their femininity allows them to mother mm. their femininity allows them to nurture mm. and if you allowed them to do that as men it's easy for you to be able to see you know incremental growth in whatever it is that you're doing and i'm a first hand yeah. testifier of yeah. that yeah. yeah my goodness my goodness yeah. let's shoot a yeah. podcast ladies and gentlemen yeah. <laughs> let's shoot a podcast <laughs> um, a, there's something you mentioned about men uh not being able to like read the minds of a lady right mm-hmm. and i think the world the world out use for that is like the anticipation of need yes but what we find is that um i saw a perfect example of a lady was ranting mm-hmm. that she was pregnant and the guy was recording her and she was doing putting things in the in the dryer right and he was saying can you believe she's uh, she just had a baby 2 weeks ago and she's putting things in the dryer like she's a superwoman and then they were saying no the fact that she's putting it in the dryer means you've not anticipated the need of the lady needing you to put it in the dryer not to record her exactly. and quote unquote compliment her yeah. but then the anticipation of that need came from a lady that's just had a baby yeah. do you think maybe there's something to be said about the nurturing that um that the boys have had which kind of they don't get in touch with that emotional side because everything's provided to them mm-hmm. so an example of that that being like when a guy when something goes wrong with a guy they don't express themselves mm-hmm. that much but when something mm-hmm. goes wrong with a girl they're it does so their link with empathy and anticipating someone's need is higher so do you think if men were nurtured more they would anticipate more and absolutely. become more equal absolutely mm-hmm. i think there's need for men to be able to get in touch with that feminine side of themselves mm. um you know we've always been taught by society i remember in primary school being told like you know you're a man you're a boy you're not mm. supposed to cry mm. Mm. you know when mm. you're punished you know you take it like a man mm. you know what's wrong with you be a man mm. you know yeah, yeah um it's a common phrase but you don't realize like the long term effects yeah, it has you don't read the emotions exactly yeah. uh, i only got to realize this in my 30s mm. <laughs> literally like mm. i lived like that like mm. I was by the time my kids saw me vulnerable mm. my daughter saw me vulnerable my wife saw me vulnerable mm. it took time but I kid you not it was the most liberating mm. you know mm. effect that I had I found myself you know just slowing down and really feeling every emotion and appreciating where I am in my life mm. and allowing myself to surf with those emotions mm. that then allowed me to appreciate the downs and the ups as i experienced them that then got me to then frame my state of mind to now this is what i need to do mm-hmm. and then from that then my will power mm-hmm. then just grew and it allowed me to even then dream bigger mm-hmm. you understand so people don't understand like there's a certain guys i won't lie to you like <laughs> over the last like 2 years or so i've come to a realization of 
everything that exists around us, good emotions, bad emotions, positive energy, negative energy, mm-hmm. they all exist for a reason and there is a balance that is Mm-hmm. that is gotten from from you having that the question is how are you using taking advantage of of those aspects mm-hmm. and being able to be the best version of yourself mm-hmm. like how much of a ceiling would you have as far as your dreams are concerned mm-hmm. and then looking at that and saying this is where i'm going to go beyond that mm-hmm. and i feel like you know being in touch with your femininity as men mm-hmm. allows us to be able to feel those things because women feel yeah yeah as men we've never been taught how to feel mm-hmm. i learned how to feel from my daughters wow yeah like yeah. i could see those there's a time i was sitting down watching uh, i was really frustrated because i came back home i was tired and then i saw my daughters like leaving their toys Mm-hmm. all over the place and i said something like man it just shows me how ungrateful you are as children mm-hmm. if you can't even take care of the things that i buy for you mm-hmm. and i remember those were like really strong words yeah and i could see my daughter's countenance just change and the way she just reacted to mm-hmm. to that statement mm-hmm. and she was like but dad oh yeah i value you yeah tough yeah and that hit me yeah. bro that yeah. hit me <laughs> so hard and i yeah. and i remember my wife telling me like you, you need to feel that like just yeah. allow yourself to feel that yeah. and it's such instances that allow you to then realize that even in leadership in the corporate space you can then now become more empathetic you can now yeah. be able to understand that it's people of a profit mm. you understand like you know it's teams yeah you know, when you're building agile teams and high performing teams yes it's about the goals that you're supposed to go with as a man like you know you have those goals that you've set up and mm. your the drive that's there yeah. and that you push that in the corporate society mm. but at the same time understanding that there is a resource that exists on this planet that's more valuable than gold silver platinum bronze mm. and that's the human potential Jeez. and the moment you're able to tap into that yeah. and understanding that it's people of a profit mm. then the profit will just follow yeah, yeah. quick follow up question because you've now taken it to a place that i love <laughs> <laughs> which is the corporate philosophy um around empathy and performance mm. um how what practical tips could you give us um people who are starting to build those agile teams um in terms of how do you motivate your team using that emotional dimension to bring out value and performance within an organization yeah i I'll, the, i i don't think there's like a set rule of how to do things i can just tell you yeah you experience. my experience exactly. um and you can pick out mm. you know from that what you may um first and foremost um my ability to relate to people has always been what I've the way I've been brought up I've always been a people person and everything um but I think what was really interesting about that upbringing and into my adulthood early marriage life you know my daughters and everything is i realized that i needed to understand people more yeah. i needed to understand what they were going through i needed to i got to understand that people are still people professionally and personally so whatever they do personally will affect them professionally and vice versa and so there was an element of emotional intelligence that needed to be included in the team as a leader and realizing that you know respect is not given it's earned and the way if i want my junior to respect me i need to respect them first and if i'm respecting them i respect their work i respect their craft and what they're doing then i need to be in the trenches with them so every single time in my office i don't have my own office i actually sit mm. with everyone mm. uh, i got this when i worked in in bangalore where the ceo um of the company that I was working with um you know told me that the reason why he sits with everyone is that he believes in the energy and the vibe that's gotten from there and when people see you coming in early mm-hmm. and you're the last one out and they see like 
the motivation that you have. It's not about you being the star of the team, but you're a team player. Mm-hmm. It's that Kobe mentality, mm-hmm. you know, that you'd have. Mm-hmm. In my mind, when people see that about you, mm-hmm then they respect you, they respect what you do. Mm-hmm. And they're even more motivated. Like it, it feels as if like they're going to be disappointing you, they're letting you down mm-hmm. because of what they're doing. And in a sense, it then pushes them to do more. It pushes them mm-hmm. to be better. Mm-hmm. And, and then removing that from the work environment and then taking it outside work is also equally important. So more often than not, you'll see me with my team, mm-hmm. you know, out and about, you know, having dinners, having lunches, going out, you know, mm. we always say that, you know, we work hard, we party harder. Mm. And, and, and that's just a mantra that we've always carried. Mm. And, and I see that happening. So for me, I believe in, and being there with them. And then as you're building out leaders, like people who you can trust, I believe in building out generals who, even if they leave you, they'll represent you better when they're away from the company. And there's going to be a sense of loyalty that's created. Not that it's demanded, but it's just freely given because you're able to give of yourself to them mm. in that way. So the way you give of yourself to them is the way you'll actually get it back. Mm. And the surprising, it's such a paradox. I mean, the more you give, the more you receive. It's true. Mm. Mm. Even in human interaction, yeah. you give of yourself more. People say, yeah, I give of myself more, but I don't seem as if it's coming back. It actually does come back. Mm. Because mm. people always remember people. There's, mm. there's a human element to it that people don't understand that we can be able to actually connect with each other mm. emotionally mm. because of work, mm. because of our personal problems or our successes. Mm. And it bring people together and we work as one. It sort of ties into that Ubuntu Mm. you know, sort of culture, mm. um, you know, where we're working for a common good and it's for the betterment of all and not for mm. the betterment of one. Yeah. And so even we talk about those awards, I, I cannot say I did that by myself. Actually, mm. credit goes back to my teams who worked so hard, who, mm. you know, pushed the lines to be able to, mm. to get to where they are. And yeah. so, you know, credit to the teams that, mm. you know, that brought those awards home. Yeah. yeah. The, the, when somebody like of your caliber and balance in like their philosophy of life comes and speaks about the way they structure their life, the way they're emotional with their families. Um, I try to break down like the human behind that and where those principles came from. Right. Cause a lot of the time we bump into people in in the street and they say, Oh, you shot this episode. And even our social media manager was saying, you guys seem so perfect. Cause I watched you on camera. And then when they meet you, they're like, Oh, they're just a guy yes, like yes, you. Yes, yeah. So the same way, I love that we've shone a light on your excellence. I want to humanize you because I feel like the best lessons come from the tougher times. Yes. So where did these philosophies come from and what were the, the down times? Because there might be somebody going through the same thing now and you're the other side of that. So what were the down times that made you bring these philosophies to life? Like the community, the family, et cetera. Cause I'd love to hear that. Um, there are three major uh, areas in my life that actually defined that. Mm. Um, and they're both tied personally and professionally. As I said, I think I told you guys off, off camera yeah, yeah, that yeah. I actually realized, like, I think a year and a half ago that I can't separate my personal from my professional mm. because I'm one person who's intertwined in mm. everything that I do. Mm. But that's a lesson that I learned like one and a half years ago. Right. But before that, man, like, I mean, I, I guess I was a mess mm, you know, mm, mm, by the very definition. I guess it. when I was winning my 16th award. I was at 116 when I realized. Uh, God on, damn, I'm a mess. Come on, stop guessing me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but here's going. the thing though, like the reality though, like in all honesty, um, the first instance was I'd just come back from Mexico. Um, I'd been dating my wife long and it was long distance and I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Mm. Um, and we decided to get married, but in that process we got pregnant mm. Mm. and coming from a very religious home, that was a, mm. Mm. that was a no, no. Yeah. Um, and so the aspects of rejection that actually came with that okay. from family, mm. And I had to deal with that. And actually like my very first definition of, of a man was when, you know, a friend of mine, her late dad, um, came and talked to me and told me, 
the decisions that you make now are what will define you mm-hmm. as a man. And he was like, I think in his 60s, going into his 70s, really lovely gentleman. And I remember I was sitting outside church and he was just mm-hmm. like, just advising me. Yeah. And he told me that, um, you know, you, you've decided to settle down at 24. Mm-hmm. Clearly, <laughs> mm-hmm. it seems like something that people will not agree with. Mm-hmm. And true, you know, part of that rejection was that. Um, But without getting into a lot of details, I remember the defining moment when I stood up in front of family and I said, listen, this is my decision to make. It's it's a hard decision. But as a man, I want to take care of my child within a wedlock society. I want my daughter to be born in a family setting. Yeah. And and that decision alone like infuriated a lot of people. Yeah. But a, other people respected it. Yeah. At 24. Yeah. Um and when my daughter was born like you know she became the darling of everyone now like everyone wants mm-hmm. to come and mm-hmm. I'm so proud of her. She's a superstar by her own self. Yeah. But I remember that time was so tough for me that defined me as a person like this is when you're making a decision you're resolute about it like those were some of my defining moments yeah right right yeah, like just not to interrupt but that's crazy like what you just said is crazy <laughs> yeah. um because uh a lot of people in our dms one of, i remember this instagram live we did with eli where we were talking about one of the questions that was sent to us was around um pregnancy unexpected unwanted right. children yes and a university student was having the debate of I have like I have this child who's coming in. Um, I really love the person, but like I don't think I'm ready. Yeah. Um, there's no emotional readiness and financial readiness. I'm not ready to be a dad. Yeah. Um, and and you've just like disclosed how you had to overcome those doubts. Um, and to stand up for yourself and your family. Yeah. And how right now I believe there's more than one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, four now, yeah. four daughters. Oh my god, yeah. like. And you've already disclosed your kind of fatherhood and the elements of your fatherhood that have impl- that have like grown right. into your business. Yes. So one, the question that I have for you is, what was the lesson that you learned in the phase of transitioning from being independent entrepreneur, flying across the world, going to Mexico, Latam, <laughs> <laughs> to um, being a dad who's like supporting his family what were some of the lessons that you learned like transitioning from being a young 24 year old about to raise a family from being a young 24 year old who was spending his time in mexico city well, the, the biggest lesson that i learned was when i make a decision that i am very sure of like in my heart of hearts and like i know i want to do this yeah whether the decision is going to be the right decision that I've made mm. or the wrong one that I've stuck to it, mm. whatever lesson that I get from that, mm. that's what I'm going to get out of it. Mm. It's not whether it's right mm. or wrong, but it's the lesson that I get from that because I know that lesson is going to spur me mm. forward. So just that aspect of just being resolute about it, that was for me the biggest lesson, mm. the biggest lesson, mm. like... It was tough, man. Like, you know, when close family members are rejecting you and they're saying no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. It's just... I think one of my biggest mentors is Barack Obama yeah. and one of the biggest jobs in the world is being US president yeah. and one of the toughest things about that job is making decisions right yes. and one thing he said in his book is that 
every day he's going to make a set of decisions that influence millions of people yes. but the only thing he can do is get over 50 percent of the right so he can sleep at night the rest of the 40 he made with his best intentions and his best exactly. uh the best information from his advisors mm -hmm. at that point and that's the only way you can kind of continue so i love what you've said that i'm resolute in it and some are going to be wrong mm -hmm. but even in the 40 he's talking about and the ones that are wrong that you're talking about yeah. There's still a lesson, so technically you've still got the hundred percent. Exactly. Right? So that's that's yeah. beautiful to hear. You yeah. said there was two other. Yeah, that, so that was the first stage. The yeah. second stage was um, when I got to understand like my own value, and you, you know, it's it's you you understand your value as a man, mm. um, and this actually applies in the corporate world. So I'll I'll tell you guys a crazy story. We love the story. We love it. So <laughs> as I was as I was you know building my career come back from Mexico, got headhunted by this international firm, you know, did very well into 2012, into 2013. I remember there was a massive layoff that happened. Um, I was affected, obviously, because they were shutting down all the Africa operations. Um, and, and that then in 2013 itself, um, I thought to myself, oh, maybe I should check out this agency space. I went to WPP. I worked at WPP, you know, for a couple of months. Um, you know, the culture just wasn't the right culture for me at yeah. that time yeah. um and i decided to make a move and i was like you know let me make my move into entrepreneurship yeah. um and i remember at that time one of i built friendships over the years obviously and most of my friends by the way are like way older than me like yeah. 20 30 years older than yeah. me yeah. i remember one of them telling me like you know at that time when you when you're working with someone um or going to work for a company you if you believe in your craft if you believe in your abilities don't build someone else's house and just be a contractor building someone else's house mm. build a house and ensure that you have a room in it mm. and that's the mentality that i went with and i remember um you know getting this uh company um company's interest and they came and told me like you know want to build a digital agency blah 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 i said yeah i mean give me some some mm. equity in the business, mm. I'll be happy to take a pay cut mm. and do this thing. And I was like, yeah, you know, why not? Mm. Um, you know, sign the, you know, shareholders agreement, the memats and everything. Mm. Got I hope you read them. <laughs> I, I did read them. I did read them. Yeah. Um, I got my 5% stake. Mm. Uh, I even had a lawyer actually, you know, help me out with that process. Mm. Um, and then um, the documents obviously lodged and now we know we're building something. We're building this house, the house is and we're, now we're like, we're going to shake the market. I'm going to shake the monopoly that's there. And I remember pushing so hard, like, you know, that having that underdog mentality and mm. pushing and, and doing everything and, you know, getting business, you know, Unilever, Tigo, Milcom are your clients, mm. you know. Mm. And it's it's yeah. a good feeling, you know. It's a nice thing right. to say in the bar, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not believing Lever. A couple names dropped. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and 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 one thing led to another, and like you know, we're on this you know roller coaster of doing so well, mm. and then weird things just started happening. Like you know, salaries have been delayed here. Mm. You know, my medical medical insurance card is not working when I go to mm. hospital, and I'm like, you know, what's going on? Mm. Come to find out. Um, you know, they were taking the revenues that we were making and the majority shareholder at that time was taking that revenue and shifting it to his other company to pay staff who hadn't been paid for so many months. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, come on, man. <laughs> and I remember going home one day, actually when one of my, my, one of my second daughter was sick and was admitted in hospital. And I said, for how long am I going to do this? Mm -hmm. And that's the second defining moment for me. Mm. I told myself, I think I'm better than this. Yeah. I think as a, as a dad, my daughter doesn't deserve this life. Mm. I shouldn't be doing this. Um, and if the opportunity <coughs> presents itself, I'm actually going to take it and go with it. Mm. And I, I kid you not guys, the moment I had that realization in my head, Two days later, I received a call from South Africa. One of my, you know, one of the gentlemen who we had worked in similar companies, but he was way older than me, came and I approached me and was like, hey, you know, we've, we've been doing this performance marketing thing for a while now, for over 13 years. Would you be interested in taking up our Sub-Saharan African operations? And I was like, 
Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. So they flew in from SA to interview me. And I remember went to Fogo Gaucho. And I remember telling myself, um, this was in 2013. Yeah. I remember telling myself like, you know, if I'm going to do this, because I know what I am and who I am, mm-hmm. I'll define my worth. Mm-hmm. And when they asked me for the number, I gave an inflated number <laughs> that yeah. I knew they were going to say no to. Yeah. And then they were like, yeah. I this it's okay. Wow. It's okay. Yeah, this makes sense. Yeah. And <laughs> I, was the I remember, <laughs> like, I literally remember you know, when I said the number, and they're like, yeah, yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Mm. It was a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of yeah. money. <laughs> yeah. And I remember going back home and, like, no, what happened the moment you're holding the fucking knife? Like, I, I, I stopped, I literally stopped did, cutting, cutting my meat. Did you, did you ask for more pineapple? No, no. I was like, I had to like look for water. Because yeah. yeah. mm-hmm. I needed to look. Yeah. Compose, what was compose, the sentence? Yeah. You know, there's always the corporate sentence that you have to make in that moment. Ah, that yeah. sounds agreeable. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. I was like, yeah, I, when, I, when I said the number, you know, they looked at each other and were like, yeah, you know, actually that pretty much aligns to, mm. you know, to our expectations. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. this shouldn't be a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's uh, a corporate yeah. speak. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We can get the paperwork done. Yeah, exactly. Well, I didn't have people on my side. We'll be in touch. We'll be in touch. But for me, it wasn't the prospect of the money, actually. It was the prospect of I'm um, getting to understand a practice that has been happening for the last 13 years that doesn't exist in, in Kenya. Kenya. It, it just exists in SA. Nowhere else mm. on the continent. Like these are like SA company servicing brands in the US, yeah. in Europe, mm. in Southeast Asia, yeah. in Australia. Yeah. And like they've been doing so much work for like mm. gaming companies, betting companies, mm. casinos, mm. and the whole aspect of performance marketing is, yeah, we understand you have your investment in marketing. Mm. What if I told you I can actually guarantee a business return on your investment? Ooh. It stops becoming about marketing. Yeah. It's now, it, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a different ball yeah. game altogether. Yeah. And I was Ooh. jazzed at the prospect yeah. of being the only one yeah. on the continent who's able to do that. So I remember going and telling my business partner, listen, I'm going to resign. I don't care about my shares. Mm. I think I've, mm. I've suffered enough. Yeah. You know what that yeah. means? Wow. Mm. <laughs> you know, it, you've basically, you're turning kind of the, um, the valuation of the company because you know, like marketing is considered an expense. Yes. Mm. Um, marketing is considered a cost center. Yeah. Mm. I consider marketing a revenue center. Exactly. Yeah. That's the yeah. thing. Yeah. That's why you yes. said. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Finance degree is coming in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, yeah, please. And, and and companies that think of marketing as their cost centers, uh, I always I always say I don't want to talk then to the CMO. I want to actually talk to the CFO and the CEO. Mm-hmm. And give me a chance to actually we'll demonstrate this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow, my gosh, my gosh. Yeah, I think we need to be in conversations with this. <laughs> yeah. um, the, the third and final moment. So yeah, so that that was the second moment when I realized my 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 worth. Mm. And then the third and final moment was when now I got in touch with now my feminine side. Mm. Um, I had a really bad health scare at the beginning of this year. Mm. Mm. Actually, exactly a year ago, 25th, around this time, mm-hmm. I hosted my friends at my house. We had a lot of meat and, yeah. you know, yeah. we we enjoyed ourselves. Yeah. Um, responsibly. Responsibly. <laughs> responsibly. <Yeah. laughs> um, and I remember uh, during this time, I got to... I, I started just feeling like pain in my stomach. I was like, oh, maybe it's because I've eaten too much yeah. or whatever. It was 25th night. I went to sleep. 26th, I was in so much pain. I was like, oh, let me just take some pain meds. Mm-hmm. You know, the Kenyan man to do. Mm-hmm. You're a man. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. but as men, I think we like, we are our own worst enemies yeah. because <laughs> women, the slightest <laughs> pain, I think I need to go to a hospital. Yeah. yeah. But for us, we're like, ah, so you're says, literally, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> pill. You yeah. are literally going through it in your colon. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> literally, yeah. literally. So I remember like 27th, I was like, yo, this is getting bad. So I decided to go to hospital on the 28th. I went to Aga Khan and they're like, oh yeah, um, you have H. pylori. I was like, oh yeah, it makes a lot of sense because, you know, I've been eating a lot of meat. I've been eating 
Oof. irresponsibly mm. Mm. Uh, to say the least so i'll go through the treatment if you guys know the h pylori treatments are very strong. very strong the more i took those drugs the more i got worse mm. and so it ended up being a misdiagnosis so come january Yo. i said until probably january 3rd or 4th mm. but during that time i was in bed sick i thought i was actually gonna die from pain yeah like literally i thought i was gonna die. it was just the pain meds that were keeping the the, the pain away mm. and 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 what ended up happening is when i went to see like an our proper specialist a gastrologist he was like you do not have h pylori can you stop taking those drugs all i had was an inflammation in my gut mm. that needed anti inflammation meds oh my gosh and here i was pumping mm. myself with h pylori treatment you know one of the biggest causes of death um in africa is misdiagnosis yeah mm. it's wow. one of the biggest yeah one of the biggest um and so when i was sitting in bed and you know new years was coming in and i remember like my kids were in their house and they're like oh yeah you know the countdown and happening like i dragged myself out of bed to be with them i just realized i've actually not been living for myself mm. and here i am i might die and i haven't lived for myself mm. i've lived for my family which is not a bad thing because i was told growing up yeah. you need to take responsibility yeah, yeah. living for my mm. parents you know taking care of them mm. taking care of my company mm. taking care of you know my 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 wife and kids but not taking care of not living for me yeah, yeah and yeah. that for me this year Mm. was it was it was now that switch that got turned on mm. and I was like you know what i'm going to live for myself this year mm. Mm. i'm going to no literally i kid you mm. not guys like mm. i told myself i'm going to step out into who i am mm. i'm going to embrace the divinity that i carry as a human mm. being because mm. i'd started understanding um you know what i carried towards the end of last year Mm. into this year and so i embraced that with everything that i had mm. i started even understanding like the empathy thing that i was telling you guys about i even applied it more in such a heavy way mm. and the more i meditated on it the more i meditated on 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 what i needed to do on the inside of me to express myself on the outside the more things started coming towards me the more i started attracting the right people around me the energy that i carry is a different energy than i than i had before i started like being very direct and very curt with the decisions that i'm making yes i had the resoluteness but more often than not i wouldn't want to speak my mind i started being courageous about that and the decisions that were being made were yes thought through but at the same time with the notion of yes it's a decision that i'll make if it's a bad decision i'll learn from it if it's a good decision <clears throat> i'll take it on but all those dots were connecting now in a very big to this point they are still connecting mm. and i told myself you know what that's 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 the one thing that i appreciate mm. that happened this year because even my friends my business partners they're like Yo your energy is different you've be, you're, it's like you've come into yourself right now and I'm I'm like yeah like I decided to just be real yeah with life mm. like if it's not working it's not working mm. I'm not going to mm. waste your time I'm not going like mm. I'm not going to go I'm not going to entertain like you know business uh propositions that I know I will not do mm. I'll just make yeah. a stop I hear yeah, that. yeah yeah so wow. let's talk about results um because it seems you are doing the you know you're going at it like at three quarter uh-huh. and you're getting 120 awards <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's talk about the fourth gear now yeah. um and the fact that you've practiced that over the course of the year mm. what has been the result and what have you seen like the vitality of that decision in your business in your life and Whoa. <sighs> exponential that's why i told you guys at the beginning i cannot wait for next year <laughs> no, i'm serious yeah. like i cannot wait for next year yeah. like people ain't seen nothing yet love it yeah. love it no seriously yeah. they ain't seen nothing yet so the results to your question number one i've gotten to see my team grow uh and integrate in a way that i never expected it to integrate yeah. initially i would position myself as you know 
uh, I work for this company or I'm a co-founder of this company. Mm-hmm. And I would try and like separate that. Now I'm unapologetic about it. I'm like, actually, I am. Mm-hmm. If, you look at my, mm-hmm. if you look at my WhatsApp status, I actually said, I am. Mm-hmm. He's him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And everything conforms to my being. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And and when I think about like the the business side, the, the dense side, mm-hmm. Yes, the vision that I carry, uh, a lot of the things that I thought through last year into this year got implemented this year. Like, I'll tell you this for a fact. We've created the biggest Salesforce certification, certified team on the continent. Get Salesforce certified. No, no, no. no. <laughs> like, it's, it's a big deal because yeah. Salesforce is looking to get into the continent and they don't have... Mm. But yeah, we use Salesforce especially for SaaS sales. Exactly. Okay, yeah, so yeah. like, you guys are phew, that crazy. Yeah. So you're no, no, thinking we're, 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 Google, Microsoft. Yeah, exactly. Microsoft, it's, it's, it's the same thing for Google. It's the same thing for Microsoft. Yeah. It's the same thing for Facebook. Like, yeah. this year we had the most certified Facebook blueprint certified team and for me i was like it's i was like i'm not about people are talking about 10x 10x i'm like yeah 10x fine yeah I, i'm looking at what what's that impossible thing that you think is unachievable yeah. that's what i want to go for that's rough like poof, developing economy yeah in a developing economy yeah. after and, an election yes yeah, after no in an election, election yeah. during an election yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> and, and, and i started thinking about it and people would think this guy is crazy Mm -hmm. and i'll tell them things like listen we're going to service clients who are not on this continent Mm -hmm. and the people in this country will not understand what we are doing because we are not competing against them we're competing against ourselves (laughs) Mm. yeah and yeah. and like with that momentum and with that energy you would actually go with that into the workplace and things just begin to shift. The energy begins to shift. I said, I'm not going to attend a pitch that I know I'm going to lose. I'm not doing any of that. <laughs> I'm going to win. I'm going for the jugular. Yeah, and it's a hundred percent success rate. Mm. I want, when I go and sit down mm. and a client sees me walking in, mm. they know mm. we have the solution. We be, Before I even open my mouth, mm. like the energy that comes into the room mm. is an energy that conf- conforms to who I am mm-hmm. and what I want from that meeting. Not mm-hmm. in an arrogant way, mm-hmm. but because it's just the divinity that I carry. And every human being has that. You yeah. have that. You have yeah. that. I'm sure when you walk into a room, mm. um, I saw it even during the YouTube thing. Mm. Like everyone acknowledges this is Eli, like super podcaster. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, this is what he's doing. And, yeah. Yeah. and people are really gravitated towards that. And I'm sure you've gotten it a lot of times. Mm-hmm. But really tapping into that human potential that I talked about earlier on and and my ability to see that Mm. then allows me to be able to then have that divinity just amplified towards them. Mm. And you're not forcing yourself on them, but they are just coming to you. And that's really what Mm. the result was. And I I wish, I know you probably wish I could give you numbers, but I can't yeah. because it's all about the people. No, I think yeah. you already have. Yeah. The people are the yeah, ones yeah. who drive the profit at the end yeah. of the day. Yeah. You know, there's this, there's this saying um, that says that success is a sweet fragrance. Yes. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and when you walk into a room, I'm sure that that's exactly what happens. Um, and that's exactly what's been happening. Mm. But the question I have for you is success may be a sweet fragrance and it may have many fathers. But failure tends to be an orphan. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, what are those instances in your life where you failed and you went through tremendous failure where you had to pick yourself up? Um, because it is in those moments that character is built. Mm-hmm. Um, because right now we're seeing obviously the results and mm-hmm. we're in the place where you're, you're literally speaking like Kobe. You're like, listen, mm-hmm. I've won four rings. Um, you know, I've won, <laughs> I've won four, I'm going for five. Well, you're, yeah. so you're talking like LeBron. Yeah. You're like, you yeah. know, you want more. Mm-hmm. Um, but I want to hear... The, the failure. The failure. I want to hear the difficulty. And guys, the, it has been difficult. Case in point. Remember that company that made me realize that I'm a different, mm. I, I need mm. to appreciate myself more. Yeah. Mm. The failure in that was number one, in that, in as much as it was a success, like something good came out of it, there was a massive failure there that mm. happened. Number one, as a part owner of a company, I needed to 
like I've done my due diligence in mm-hmm. financial management mm-hmm. because I don't think you guys understand the gravity of the situation. Mm-hmm. You are in a place or in a position of power and influence mm-hmm. and people's livelihoods actually depend on you. Mm-hmm. And so when that source of their livelihoods being what it needs to be mm. is disrupted because of a financial delay or a misappropriation of funds mm. here and there mm. it's not the salary is delaying it's people lively people's livelihood mm. are, are at stake mm. and the more i reflected upon it the more i realized i failed massively not to just do my due diligence in asking the questions like what is going on yeah what's going on with yeah. this what like why are funds being funneled the way they are yeah. Yeah. and 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 it it got me thinking to just like even getting to understand that more it was deeper than the problem was deeper than i expected it to be because turns out mm. i thought i was a shareholder of a company that was you know presumably <laughs> doing well only to find out whatever i signed in my shareholders agreement mm. was not what was lodged in the registrar's office yeah. and so i'm a shareholder in my right. mind but the so government doesn't recognize me as a shareholder so, so the signature was it like a forgery no the documents that i signed mm. versus what was lodged were two different sets of documents mm. wow yeah and that was like I I never felt so cheated and yeah. s- so like it was bad mm. it was really bad um and having to explain to your wife and having to explain mm. it to my wife yeah it was tough mm. it was so tough mm. but thankfully there's a good that came out of it exactly. and there's a learning to that yeah right? that's god yeah. yeah it is god 100% it is god yeah. the second failure that i had massive failure was even as a dad mm. i focused all my energy all my time in building a a successful career but i also realized that you know where you put your time in is where your 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 success comes from that's true and so my family ended up you know yeah. suffering from that yeah. Yeah. um and i could see it in the way i reacted to to my daughter as i explained earlier on um I came home and you know I found the toys on the floor and I said like I work so hard in my mind I was thinking I work so hard for you guys but you're not appreciative you're not appreciative mm. and that hit me because I realized I failed as a father mm. to be there mm. and maybe instill that whole essence of mm. you know you need to after you're done with your toys you need to put them together mm. you know put them in the basket or whatever mm. a clean up after yourself like mm. I, probably that was on me mm. that i didn't do that and i felt so bad that it didn't i wasn't there for that mm. um and and i felt like i had failed as a dad mm. in as much as i thought like yeah i felt yeah. like i had failed as a dad mm. um and, and so some of those things you know when i think about failures in that sense it made me realize quite quickly that um in as much as i failed and i'll continue failing and that's not going to be the last failure i'm a i'm a human being and the most important thing is that i need to give myself grace yeah to mm-hmm. say that it's fine mm-hmm. to fail and it's it's okay mm-hmm. it's 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 part of who you are mm-hmm. it's part of the divinity that you carry because your divinity is also defined by your own failures mm. so i i say that yeah my failures in being a father and being a husband yeah might have been there but mm. at the end of the day they actually defined who i am today yeah. Yeah. and the third one was just being over trusting to people and mm. um, i failed in this sense of and uh, my business of entertainment um africa creative agency we were looking to fundraise some money and 
Um, I remember at South by Southwest, we got this Nigerian. <laughs> what did you say? Just slow down. South by Southwest. You're using words here that are heavy. Let me see this water. Yeah. At South by Southwest. For the audience, <laughs> please, Joe. Uh, please, before you move, you're moving fast. Oh. When, you, when you say corporate things, you know, please, Joe, look into that corner. Which one? That one? Yeah, that yeah, yeah. And explain what South by Southwest is. Uh, South by Southwest is, uh, is an annual event that happens in the US mm-hmm. um, that brings together, you know, industry professionals on the entertainment side, business, uh, the creative economy, everyone comes there and it's a nice networking event you know there are talks that happen uh there are workshops that happen they showcase quite a lot of things there um my business partner met this guy who's a nigerian who we wanted him to invest in our business and we're running a business of entertainment is nothing like it in on the continent or so we thought and so he told us if i'm going to invest in this business i think I already have a similar investment, but in Lagos. Mm -hmm. So the only way I'll put money into this business is if you can see what intersections you two have Mm -hmm. and then figure it out Mm -hmm. and then I'll put in money. I'm like, yeah, we're open to it. So we went ahead and we traveled to Lagos and were given the presidential treatment, Mm -hmm. bruh. (laughs) <laughs> I've never been escorted out of a plane before everyone else by government, Yo. you know, yeah. officials. Like mm. I was treated like a VIP, I was, you know, escorts. Mm. Like it's mm. a big deal. Yeah. Um, and I'd been to Lagos enough times and, you know, you know, dealt with immigrations. I didn't have to deal with my immigrations. I just had to give my passport to someone and I was taken and my bags were removed and I found yeah. myself in a car and my, <laughs> like it was crazy. Yeah. Um, and I remember you know, walking into, you know, the business that he had invested in. And it, it was a massive company with beautiful cars, you know, G wagons, mm-hmm. BMW i3s. Like I saw an i3 for the first time in, yeah. in Lagos. And mm-hmm. I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, you have like Porsches, you know, parked. I'm like, yo, these guys seem to be doing really well. Mm-hmm. Turns out they're also in the managed talent management business. You know, they were managing Don Jazzy at the time, you know, some big, big, big talent. And they told us, yeah, like, you know, we'd like to understand your business model and how you're doing it and what, you know, the plans for the future are. And so in my naiveness, I gave them everything. We gave them our roadmaps, the talent that we are going to be representing, what we want to do. And um, they said, okay, yeah, so that's fine. And we're going to then uh, discuss, you know, the investment. And so we decided on like 70, 30, they wanted to do 70 for the joint venture that we put it together. They'll put 70, we'll bring in 30. But we're like, no, we have the biggest talent roster. Mm. It's bigger than yours. Mm. You guys have the money. So, you know, let's meet somewhere. We wanted 50, 50. They're like, no, 60, 40, because we're the ones putting in money. And then I'll never forget because I used to work, uh, age to five and then I'll dress a bit <laughs> and then my my second day my my other day would start between 9 and 3 a.m in the morning so i remember mm. at around two in the morning in I, the middle of working as you're saying yeah in the middle of working having a conference call with these guys and the question they would ask me is because they were in la at that time was that so how much are you bringing to the table I'm like, what do you mean? How much are you bringing to the table? Yeah, we're bringing in this money, but how much are you guys bringing to the table? We came to the table asking for money and that's why we are having this conversation. Mm -hmm. And just like that, the deal fell through. Mm. Was the skin in the game? Yeah, Yeah, they were were asking us to put in money and we're like, but we were coming to look for funding to get this money. Mm. And then they went ahead and just to rub it in our faces, they came and approached me and they said, listen, you're a good guy. Why don't you come and be an employee of this company and we'll pay you a salary? And I was like, what? Jeez. And they went ahead and told my business partner the same thing. And I was like, and I, I will never forget this was in 2016. I got into depression, mad. I did not speak to my business partner. I was low. I felt like I'd wasted so much time. And to add insults to injury, they went ahead and took all our plans 
and implement them, including the staff who are going to hire, like we had given profiles that we were going to get this guy, wow. this lady, this person, this person. Yeah. Yo, my man. That's, that was an expensive flight to Lagos. Yo, <laughs> yo, yo, my yo, God. yo, 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 yo. Well, I've yeah. never, like, yeah. as far as being played is concerned, yeah. I got played a good one. Yeah. That's insane. And that was a failure. Mm. How would you pick mm. yourself back up then? Prayer. Mm. Oh, yeah, mm. Mm. You know, encouragement from, you know, from, from the wife. Mm. Remind, constantly being reminded and being affirmed of who you are in spite and despite everything that has happened. Mm. Because you never lose who you are or what you mm. carry. Mm. Mm. when you fail mm. it's just who you are yeah. um and around the same time i remember um the company from sa that had approached me to work with them mm. um at the same time things just shifted in a very interesting way densu came and told me why don't you come and start up i prospect mm. and another company called amnet and will you will be part of the family Mm. and we'll give you a position in the company mm. and i told them one with one with one uh condition that whatever you pay me will sustain my lifestyle mm. and number two um i will be able to then have my operation run from kenya as opposed to having other people from other countries running my operation mm. Mm. and that's how we got the business in 2017 started off to becoming the biggest yeah and the industry five years later. So your story is so captivating. And one of the things I'm realizing from the very beginning of you being 24 years old mm -hmm. uh, and saying, I'm going to support this family, mm -hmm. you being saying that, you know, this company has made this mistake with me. I'm going to make a decision and go on my own. There's been very high quality decisions um, over time. And that's what me and Oscar say, to be a successful business person, it makes up high quality decisions mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. But all of them, there's a thread of confidence in them there's a thread yes. of self-belief there's a yeah. thread of like if it happens it happens but i know and as you're going further in your story you're hearing more self-worth especially yes. when you're talking about your wife yeah but where did that original confidence come from because i think a lot of young men that have dreams <laughs> lack mm. the confidence to implement but you're the difference because you had the confidence as well as the competence so where does that come from it came from it I won't slide. Came from being affirmed, you know, mm. from a very young age. Mm. This mm. is who you are. Mm. You know, you are, you are knowledgeable. Mm. You are bright. Mm. Don't ever doubt yourself. Um, Oscar and I were talking about our high school days, <laughs> <laughs> and I went to FSK. Um, and uh, my principal at the time would give us talks. I'm sure Hemba also used yeah, to give did. talks yeah, in yeah, Alliance. Yeah, right? It's the same. It was the same DNA actually. Um, and you know, during those talks, he would instill certain values and certain principles mm. to live by that allowed us to build our self belief. Um, and so from my mom to my high school life, uh, my dad also included. Um, and then as I grew older, it's one thing to be told something. It's another thing to, for it to register in your head that, ah, yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, I am smart. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm good looking. Yeah, I mean, I used yeah. to be told I'm good looking from a very young age. Yeah. It just, I was like, oh yeah, everyone is like, you know, that's yeah, a good yeah, thing. Yeah. Until yeah. I was told like, yo, look at the mirror, look at yourself. Why do you think this is happening and this is happening? I was yeah. like, oh, okay, so this is what happens. Mm. Um, and then being told all those things and being affirmed in that way just got me to uh, that point. Right. But just that consistency of mm. telling yourself that this is who you are, mm. this is what you're doing. And, and and here's the most powerful thing that I learned towards the end of last year was I started affirming myself mm. about who I want to be mm. in the present. Mm. Mm. So let me explain. Yeah, 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 so let me explain it. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell myself, hey, I'm not a let's say for purposes of this conversation i'm not a billionaire right now for purposes of this conversation <coughs> i say you know what i'll be a billionaire in the future mm -hmm. but for me to speak my future into existence i need to tell myself 
I am a billionaire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? Mm, so mm. speaking your future mm. self mm. into being presently. I have a billion dollars. I just don't have it yet. Mm. Mm. No, I have a billion dollars. Period. Mm. Another version of that is in Atomic Habits. Yes. And they say that if you want to be um, the, at the pinnacle of any craft, yeah. or you want to be even just a better person, or if you're overweight and you want to be in great shape, yes. you have to say... Uh, somebody in shape would make these decisions exactly. because I'm that person. I'm, yeah, so I'm exactly. seeing that same trend. Yes, it's the, yeah. it's the same exact yeah. trend. It's the yeah. same exact frequency, exactly. actually. Yeah. And so I started thinking about it in that way. And I'll tell myself things like, I am abundant. Mm. Mm. I am limitless. Mm. And because I would confirm those things to myself mm. to my psyche when i wake up at 3 45 in the morning and i write down and i say this mm. is who i am this is what i'm doing mm. it may not be what i am presently right now mm. but i wanna what i want to be in the future comes in here and i kid you not like even golfing like i started playing golf this year mm. yeah we saw like, you with bn on the on the yeah yeah, 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 yeah exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. i started playing golf this year yeah i'm like i'm, I'm actually pretty damn good at it yeah. like you know, <laughs> you know on the subject of golf <laughs> um, <laughs> like, how, how's your swing my <laughs> friend <laughs> i'm tiger woods <laughs> 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 there you go. There you go. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. Yeah. So no, but we think about it in that way. Like, you know, just speaking that yeah. into reality now goes mm. a long way. Mm. And so I've been blessed to have people around me. I told you most of my friends are in their sixties. My mentor is in the States. Um I was actually about to ask that was my next question. So yeah. please continue. Yeah. <laughs> no, my mentor is a spiritual mentor, is a business mentor. He lives in the US um, and he's the one who actually instilled this values in me and allowed me to be the person. And I believe you me, my potential hasn't been seen yet because he tells me, oh, you have no idea what you're capable of. And I'm like, you know what? I have no idea what I'm capable of. Yeah. And the world is not ready for, for what I am yeah. going to be. And, and I keep on saying that, like, mm, mm. there's the energy that I carry that I know I'll have to transmute it. If you look at my Instagram yeah. bio, I actually said, I'm transmuting this energy mm. that is going to bring life and abundance to the people around me, the mm. people I interact with. Yeah, mm. Mm. That is incredible. Um, I'm so annoyed about time but i have to ask this i'm so like i can feel i can feel it going and it's very annoying what, what did i tell you yeah. guys yeah i know because yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're we on full gear like right now full gear. Yeah. 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 yeah you know what after this to... after this shoot um yeah. let's let's continue this conversation yeah, for sure. I'm happy. Yeah. i actually blocked the whole afternoon guys. amazing yeah. amazing yeah. um there's you've literally defined the kind of man we've been trying to portray on this podcast right yeah. When you ask you the question, you say, and your body changed, you said, they're not ready for next year. Yeah. Like it went into full masculine. Yes. Then the next question, when you talk about failure and your daughter and looking at Stress. an emotion, yes. it's literally what we've been trying to preach. And you're literally the embodiment of this, that men are both yes. and they exist. They're not mutually exclusive. Exactly. So for me, I'm just so grateful that people are going to see somebody at the pinnacle of their career, not at the peak, but at the pinnacle right mm -hmm. now. And then also see the failure that has come with that mm -hmm. and see that the two the two emotions, the two femininity and masculinity yes, yes. can emb be embodied, embodied and then create success. Exactly. So I'm just so grateful for the kind of hour we've had now. Because yeah, it's, yeah. it's been an hour already? More. Yeah. More. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 More, yeah. You've wow. been, you've been yeah. surfing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Surfing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. From my side, um, I do give the flowers <laughs> yeah. Yeah. on the podcast. Yeah. Um, I think the refreshing thing for me is, uh, and we haven't touched on it, mm. is uh, I've seen that through the game of basketball that we both share. Yeah. Mm. Um, you've been mentoring young men and boys as well. Yes. Um, I think it's Runderich. Runderich Basketball Association. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. I've, I've, I've seen that uh, and I saw that in your bio and I was very inspired by that because I think it's not just important to succeed it's important for people of color people mm. from kenya mm. people with your background mm. to speak of the schools that you've gone mm. to and the places mm. that we've had an education to be seen to have mm. these experiences and to mm. have achieved success i feel mm. like all the time um traditional media portrays black and african men of the black and african community we are seen to be this 
um, underserved, needy group mm. of people mm. um, and see that you've added value in Mexico, in Cape Town. Yeah. Um, um, I'm sure your Spanish is incredible. Uh, it's incredible. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, um, to see um, a Kenyan, an African, a father who's responsible, a present father, um, and a successful businessman who is only getting started mm. Um and to have that opportunity to sit with you here and to share that perspective with us has been a blessing. And hopefully, um, as Eli and I continue to fashion kind of the path that we're trying to build with this podcast and with our media vision as well, um, it's good to know that we'll have at least your voice to kind of bounce off of ideas um, and work with collaboratively in the future. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Um, and then final question. Um, and want you to give us one piece of content, whether it's a movie, a book, a film, something that's inspired you that you think you can touch the world with um, in this moment? A book, a film, a piece a, of content. One piece Anything of content. Consumed, yeah. Okay. The one thing that I've consumed, it's not a movie. It's actually a clip on building your willpower. Um, it's on YouTube. Um, I literally, literally just listened to it this morning as I was driving, as I was coming here. You could share it with us, we'll link it. Yeah, uh, yeah, the link will be, yeah, <laughs> yeah he knows at, he the, knows. at, yeah. the, at, at, at the bottom of, of, of this uh video. Um, but it was all about the willpower and how you can actually build your willpower because people don't be, realize you know, the, your will is the one free thing that you have. Right. So building that willpower is the most important thing for you to, to do. Uh, and there's an experiment that was done. And allow me to talk about this There's an experiment that was done by, uh, by this group of scientists on how to actually build the willpower. Um, and, and the first experiment was like, you know, go underwater and hold your breath and let's see for how long you can hold your breath. Mm. Mm. And, you know, after like 15, 20 seconds, you'd want to like breathe, but what you don't realize is that the, the, the stress and the pressure that comes out of it is actually good for you. And the more you practice, practiced that, the more willpower yeah. you create. Right. So that was one. The second one was they got this guys who are cigarette smokers, um, and they couldn't do without a cigarette a day. And, and, and they were put in a, they were asked to stop smoking for 24 hours. Um, and it was an experiment that they were running and they were brought into a room just like this. And they were told, you know, come with your most favorite cigarette brand that you'd like to smoke after 24 hours of not smoking and the cigarettes were put there. Half of that group were taught how to surf the emotions the same way we've been surfing this podcast. And the other half were not taught how to surf the emotions. And I'll explain what surfing emotions would look like. And so these guys would sit in a, in the room and they were told, okay, first things first, smell the pack of cigarettes and they'd go and smell the pack of cigarettes and then they put it back. Second thing would be, okay, after two minutes, you're told open the, the wrapping of the cigarettes and they would open it and they're told, okay, stop. Don't touch the cigarettes. After two minutes, they would wait. And it's like, the next, after two minutes, again, they're told, okay, remove the cigarette from the pack mm -hmm. and smell the cigarette. Cool. And then after two minutes, again, you're told, don't do anything. Don't light the cigarette. <coughs> or don't smoke it. Leave it there. And then they're given lighters and you're told, hold the lighter, light the flame, but don't put the cigarette into the flame. And so you see this like anticipation being yeah. built. And for the people who, you know, you have not smoked a cigarette for 24 hours, you have this urge to just get it over and done with. But the people who are taught how to surf their emotions were explained to how they could be able to feel and understand what they're feeling at that point in time, like understand the urge that they were feeling. And the result of that experiment was that the people who are taught how to surf their emotions ended up reducing their smoking habits by 40%. Yeah. And the others would not necessarily stop. But the, the, the point that they were driving home, and I encourage everyone to actually go and check this out, was that by you surfing emotions and you understanding the way you're feeling and appreciating every up and down that you'd have, you are actually building your willpower. 
you're actually able to dream bigger. And this is any human being Mm. is capable of this. And that would be my parting shot as far as a piece of content is concerned. Amazing. I can't wait to watch it. Thank you. I can't wait to watch it. Uh, Wow. Wow. Goodness me. (laughs) Well, guys, uh, we hope you've enjoyed this podcast. Half as much. (laughs) Because we (laughs) had a ball. Thank you you so much, bro. Thanks so much, man. What a guy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Bye bye. Go home. Sleep well. Think hard. (laughs) Suffer emotions. (laughs) And like, share, subscribe. (laughs) All right.